Hello everyone, my name is Devin. Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be talking to you about how to get into music school. And if you didn't know already, I am a current conservatory student in Boston. I study the flute and I hope I can spread some of my knowledge to potential music students. And just to be clear, these tips apply to any type of music school, be it a state school or a private conservatory these tips will work just the same. Now, the most important thing in applying to music school is getting a lesson with the teacher that you're looking to study with. I say this because you really wanna put yourself in the shoes of the teacher. If you were a teacher at a music school and you had to sit through 50 auditions on the same day and you already knew about five of them, I'm betting you would probably favor the five people that you've already seen, you've already interacted with, who's already showed an interest in studying with you by, you know, flying out and taking a lesson with you. This shows the teacher that you really care about the school, and this is very important. I also say this because it's not just about your playing. Obviously, you want to present your best craft when you're playing for your prospective teacher, but you should also uphold a level of professionalism in how you act, how you dress, how you carry yourself. Because if you play really well, but you don't seem like such a nice person, the teacher's not going to want you in their studio because you're not going to be a good mix with the other students that the teacher currently has. When you do have a lesson with the teacher, it's important to not just talk about music, but it's also important to talk about specific aspects of the school that they teach at that you might be interested in. If you express an interest in something that the school has that's pretty unique to that school, that will give you a lot better chance of getting in because that teacher knows that you want to go to that school specifically. And also ask the teacher lots of questions. Have like a list prepared of questions that you want to ask the teacher because if you ask them questions, they'll really think that you're engaged They'll really think that you're interested in the school, and this will make you look like a lot better candidate. And also, it can kind of be scary if these teachers charge a lot of money for their lessons. Some of these teachers actually offer free trial lessons, um, but sometimes they can charge $300, upwards of $400 per hour, um, and that's a lot of money. On top of the travel, if you're flying, that would cost a lot of money as well. But you have to remember that this is an investment in your education, in your career even, because even if you don't get into these schools, you will have this connection and you will have learned from this experience. So I would say that it's worth it to get a lesson with as many people as you possibly can. Now, obviously, before all of this, you want to study the school, study their website, learn about all of the unique programs that the school has to offer. Some schools are for just playing orchestral music. Some schools are just for playing contemporary music. Some schools are just for playing, you know, specific things and learn about the other programs that the school has to offer, stuff that you're not even doing right now. For example, some conservatories also have musical theater and dance. And think about what you might be interested in exploring. Some people don't want to just do music, they want to do other things, and if your school has possibilities to do other things, really play into that. If you're really into orchestral playing, I would advise looking up the school on YouTube or Vimeo or just Google to see if they have any recordings of their orchestra or other ensembles. This will give you a good gauge of the level of musicianship at the school and will tell you a little bit about their unique playing style. Obviously, every ensemble is going to play a little different, and based on where the school is located, they might have different traditions that they may be a part of. It's also important beforehand to make kind of a spreadsheet of the dates and deadlines for all of the audition materials, the pre-screening materials, if there are any, and the repertoire, the teachers, the cost of the school, this is all important to keep track of, and this is really important to keep you on track. Sometimes you might not be so interested in a school, they might be your safety school or something, and you kind of forget to submit something, and then you just kind of have to wait another year if you, if you need to go to that school. So you don't want that to happen. 
So it's nice to have everything kept in one place. And leave your options open. In the list of schools that you apply to, I would advise to apply to at least one safety school, one school that you maybe already know the teachers at and you kind of feel like they're going to accept you um, regardless of how you play in the audition. It's kind of important to keep this option open because you don't want to only apply to schools that are too hard for you to get into and then maybe if you don't get into any of them then what are you going to do just not going to go to college for a year it's it's a bad place to be in and that's why safety schools exist and conversely don't only apply to schools that are too easy to get into and you don't care so much about you should at least stretch and try to apply to at least one school that you're maybe like I would really want to go here but I might not get in it's good to at least try and applying to more schools is not a bad thing. It actually gives you more experience, more audition experience, more performance experience. And if you get a lesson with those teachers, that's going to give you more connections, even if you don't get into this school. And also be prepared to fail. It's kind of daunting when you go into your audition. And I might make a whole new video about specifically what to do on audition day and how to really prepare for an audition specifically for a school. But being prepared to fail is something that took me a really long time to kind of figure out. I'm such a perfectionist and a lot of musicians are perfectionists as well. So if something doesn't go perfect and you mess up a note in your first measure of your audition, that's really going to sink the rest of your audition and you're going to think that things are a lot worse than they are. So if you're prepared to fail, you're prepared to maybe miss a note in the beginning, at least if you miss that note in the beginning, you'll come back from it in the rest of the audition and you'll prove how good you are and how that note doesn't define you. And if you don't get in, you have to know that it's not always about you. These schools kind of operate like businesses and there are very specific things that they're looking for and a lot of these things don't even really have anything to do with your playing specifically. So don't get too hard on yourself if you don't get into a specific school. Even if you know the teacher, sometimes you could be really close with the teacher at the school and you still don't get in, and that would make you feel really awkward. You're like, maybe they secretly don't like me. It's usually not that. These schools have very limited spots, and they might be looking for something else that doesn't even really have to do with your playing. And if you don't know which schools to apply to, which type of music school to apply to, I would advise watching my video. I have a whole video on this, which music school should I go to? I'll link it down in the description below. And I really hope this helps. Auditioning is really scary. Applying anywhere is really scary. And there are a lot of great resources on YouTube. I'll continue making videos just like this where I sit down and talk to you about it and hopefully this makes you feel a little more comfortable. If you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to respond. Please like this video if it helped you and share it with anyone who you think might need it. If you're a fellow flute player and you wanna subscribe, that's great. I make a lot of flute content and I make other videos just like this one if you're interested in the music school life. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.